Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and I feel like the reason behind rebuilding cars has been lost. There's quite a few reasons why you might want to rebuild a car, but the main one should be to get an amazing deal. Kind of like VTunes Hellcat Charger. This is a car with only 12,000 miles on it, completely rebuilt, cost him less than $30,000, a near 50% saving. A Hellcat for the price of a Toyota Camry is an incredible deal, and this one is a lot of fun. Now, exotics are selling for a pretty solid premium right now at the auction, and for fun, once in a while, we'll go ahead and just throw some low ball bids in and random car selling, and we won a Lamborghini. And no, this isn't some sort of 90 or $100,000 wreck Lamborghini that we're just gonna dump tens of thousands of dollars into. We won it for a little bit over $40,000, and it's actually a really nice model. It's a 2010 Gallardo LP560. It's the all-wheel drive model with 560 horsepower. Now, it hit a guardrail, it, and it looks like it hit a guardrail, but there's a lot of positives going on in this car. So what I wanna do right now is roll the footage of this car being delivered because they needed to take it off the main transport truck to a flatbed to then drop it off, and then we're gonna jump right in to our Lamborghini rebuild project. And here it is, the 2010 Lamborghini Gallardo LP560, and does it look rough. According to its Carfax, this car smashed into a guardrail, and it must have flipped around because it messed up the rear quarter as well. This car has damage all over the place. Now it's obvious the hood is off the car, and that's because when it was delivered, we did a little bit of disassembly so we could figure out what parts we need here in the front end to finish this project in a timely manner. So let's roll that disassembly footage right now, and then I'll take you on an in-depth look of this total Lamborghini. It makes a lot of sense that this car hit a guardrail. If you take a look at the hood, it appears it slid up under something, as did the driver's side fender and structural beam here. Now the main concern when we were bidding on this car was the front frame, as Lamborghini frames are made out of aluminum and most standard cars like your Focus RS over here have a steel frame. Steel can be manipulated much easier than aluminum. Aluminum is brittle and it cracks. So the good news here, is that our main frame is in perfect shape. We have one upper and one lower beam there, one upper and lower beam there. The lower ones run all the way back into the firewall. The upper ones connect to more structural beams that also connect to the firewall, and they are as straight as it gets. As for the destroyed driver's side beam, the nice thing about it is that it just simply bolts in place, unlike the main structure, which is all welded all the way back there. This can be pulled out and replaced as simple as building a Lego. This set of wheels is definitely my personal favorite that was offered on the Gallardo. And if you look up close, between the tire and the fender, there's a pretty large gap there, but that's because this car came with the optional nose lift system, which seems to be operating just fine. Now our toughest challenge is gonna be right here in the rear of the quarter panel, where it sustained a pretty nice dent. Luckily, our quarter panel didn't shift and mess up any gaps between the door and the panel itself. Again, aluminum is slightly harder to manipulate, and this is pretty thin back here, so we're gonna try and restore it without breaking it or tearing it any more than it is. Now, behind this wheel is a bent control arm, so let's go ahead, jack the car up, and replace that right now.
pretty obvious our rear wheel did not survive this accident. Luckily, I was able to find a replacement. It's in pretty good shape. I also bought a tire for it, and the company shipped us the wrong size tire. This is a 19-inch wheel. They shipped us an 18-inch tire. So we're gonna do our best to find one locally, use new whatever, just so that we can get this car rolling and driving within the next few days and make sure all the mechanics are functioning properly. Our damage to the quarter did extend to the rear here, and this is unfortunate because look how good the passenger side looks. Then look at the driver's side. Just a small section of parts were taken out here, and each one of these parts are fairly expensive. Rear tail light, about $1,500. This rear grill is about $3,000, but we've got an aftermarket solution for that, the bumper and the diffuser that's gonna save us a lot of money. What I wanna do right now is start disassembling our rear end so we have better access to our quarter when we go to repair it. then adjusted it, and then painted it, and it was just so easy. But you could do it at home, DIY, with a little bit of flex tape. Oh, hold on. Those aren't Torx bits in there? Mm -mm. That's why I'm having such a tough time. You, a Torx bit. you said it was a T25 over there. A T25 was a Torx bit. Oh my goodness. Somebody get this guy out of the shop. Hold you, on. You need to work out at Walmart. It is a Torx bit. Look at that. That's a Torx bit. You're using the wrong bit. That's a Torx bit. It's not the Allen head. Hold on, I'm going to go find yours. Where are they? Over here? Mm hmm. Where'd you put them? They're right there. Oh, they are. Dude, those are Allen heads. Yes. No wonder. And you're using a Torx. Well, now the Torx on that <laughs> side. We got Torx head on that side, now and on that side. There it is. Now, if you do take a look at this, I think, does it have a little crack in it? Yeah. A little bit well, right there. A little bit right here. And this feels like it's made out of what? Fiberglass? Fiberglass. So that'll be pretty easy to repair. It's not even all the way through. I mean, well, it's not right there. like a major crack. So this will be repainted while it's repainted, be repaired. And we're gonna leave it off the car for right now. We got everything we need off the rear to gain access to our quarter when we begin the repairs on it. You can see the heat shield is a bit bent up. This is something we might be able to re kind of mold back in place. If not, we'll just go ahead and get a new section of heat shield. This bracket right here, which is a long piece of thread, you can see it should be straight. It's been bent in. When this is pulled outward a little bit, it should straighten that up. And then we do have a little bit of a bend in our reinforcement bar. How would you repair that? Once we get it on the frame rack, we're gonna go ahead and just heat it up a little bit, and it should just be able to be pulled out pretty easily. The interior spec on this car is awesome. Check out that yellow diamond stitching on the door cards and on the seats. The Lamborghini logo embossed in the headrest there. And this car has no deployed airbags, basically no issues in the interior at all, which saves us a ton of time in interior disassembly and a lot of money since we won't be replacing any costly airbags. Now when we fire the car up, everything works. Electronics and all, and when we start the engine, There's no major warning lights or anything. Of course, we have the light that shows us that our nose lift system is on 
and we have the light that shows us we've got to issue a traction, but the car is up off the ground right now. Oh, and low coolant, we got to replace that radiator. And one of its best parts, 12,000 original miles. When we're done with this car, it's going to look brand new. Since we've got a good amount of time to source the parts for this car, that's really going to help us keep our price low. Right here, we've got a used hood painted in the same color that our car came in. It's in great shape and it only costs around 1500 bucks. Now, when I started looking for bumpers, I noticed that the original ones were very costly, especially when you start adding all the grills and hardware to them. I sourced these here from a company called FGP Stuff. They're super high quality and they're the super legera style and they cost literally a few thousand dollars for both the bumpers and this fender. It's a real great find. It's in excellent condition. OEM Lamborghini Fender spent under a thousand dollars for this and this is pretty tough to find especially since the Fender is a little bit different for the LP cars like we're building. The headlight though that's just one part I couldn't escape paying the Lamborghini tax on. I looked all over for a used one couldn't find one so we bought this one brand new for thirty five hundred dollars. So this radiator is like really bent but sometimes they still work after being severely bent but this one is actually leaking out of the metal tank here on the top. So luckily we were able to get a recreation one that was a fraction of the price of the dealership and it's super high quality. All right, so I got a good deal on a bunch of the parts, but where we make this the cheapest Lamborghini ever is with the help from VTune. That smashed in quarter, that dented in front frame piece. If this was an insurance job, it'd definitely be replacing the quarter panel and replacing the front frame piece. But we're gonna repair the rear quarter panel and build a new frame piece out of a bar of aluminum. A bar of aluminum costs, what do you think like about? 20 bucks. 20 bucks beats 4,500 from Lamborghini, and this should be an epic build. And what I want you guys to do is make sure you're following VTune Garage here on YouTube, where V is gonna be posting a video of the fabrication of that aluminum frame piece. It's gonna be awesome. And make sure you're following us both on Instagram. I'm gonna link all of this down in the description box below. Now, if you're as excited about a cheap Lamborghini build as I am, be sure to hit that like button. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today. I'll catch you very soon.